welcome to Ruth Loves to Knit. Obviously I'm Ruth and I do indeed love to knit. I am coming to you this morning from southwest Devon, about 10 miles outside Oakhampton, where I live with my husband Nigel and my two children, Samuel is 11 and Eve is 12, and of course our little dog, Honey. And due to the announcement last night, in the UK at least, they're all at home today, so I apologise for any background noise or any disturbances. Um, myself and my husband, we work for a Christian mission called the Faith Mission. And as I share my nitty journey with you, I hope you'll permit me to just maybe share a little bit of my faith too from time to time. Um, it's a massive part of our life and um, I hope that you'll let me just share little snippets with you every so often. Well, let's get started. Lockdown. I have to say there were some silver linings from last time's lockdown. I've got lots of knitting done, lots of homeschooling socks. And the other silver lining is that I've made an awful lot of really good online knitty friends. And you can blame them for this podcast. They've encouraged me to get started. They've encouraged me to share what I've been knitting and they say that I'm quite a fast knitter. I didn't realise that until they told me that so I have um, quite a few items that, that I've knitted over the last few months and I hope as you come with me um, today that you'll enjoy seeing what I knit. Um, I'm just going to look down here for my notes because obviously a first podcast it's a bit nerve-wracking. You can find me on uh, Instagram at Ruth Loves to Knit and on Ravelry as Crafty Mad Midwife. For many years I was a midwife in the UK and overseas and so hence the handle I have on Ravelry. I have to be honest I don't use Ravelry as much as I used to. Um, since the format's changed I too struggle with it but there's a few projects on there if you want to have a look and I try and, and add bits and pieces but I have to admit I'm old school and I like to keep um, <laughs> A, a journal um, and this is 2020. Um, I've invested in a sprocket uh, photo photographer um, so this side's a little, a little less uh, jumbled than this side but that's how I like to, to record my projects and as you can see there was a lot of projects to record. Um, the format will take the usual uh, finished objects, whips, chatty bits and just hunker down and we'll see how we get on. Obviously being a first uh, podcast it's very hard to know what to share um, I but I thought I would just pick the last few things that maybe I had finished. Obviously Christmas has just passed and uh, I knit numerous things. Everyone got a knitted gift this year from family to teachers to um, husbands, everybody got a knitted gift but those have obviously gone um, to the people that, that they were due for. So I thought I would just share um, just recent, other recent finished objects and the, probably the most recent finished object I have is the this one here. It be shine out of the, excuse me, I've got the podcasting crinkle and this is a Stephen West shawl. It's called the Winter Light Shawl and it's actually a, 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 a knitting cal that's going on at the moment and it started on Boxing Day 26th of December and if you want to join in there's still time and I honestly could not put this down the winter light shawl it's a four skein shawl and Stephen West in my opinion is just a genius and I'll be honest uh, when I first looked at Stephen West's shawls I was fully intimidated I found them I just looked at the pictures and just thought they're not for me they'd be far too advanced but if you're thinking the same, <laughs> don't rule it out. Stephen has an amazing knack of being able to put an amazing pattern and yet write it so simply and use really simple stitches um, yet that comes out as a beautiful, beautiful shawl. And this winter light shawl was no exception. Now it's a paid for pattern so I can't give too much away but I could not put this down and I finished it on the 1st of January. Does that count as a 2020 finish? I'm not sure. But I'll just show you now the yarns that I used. 
um, I just happened to have some singles in my stash and I wasn't quite sure what to do with them. So I thought, well, this is the perfect project to use those for. And the three, um, the main color, sorry, that I used was this beauty from Ching Fibers. I think that's how you, you pronounce it. It's Q-I-N-G and it's a UK um, company. And I actually got this on a D stash in eBay. And I didn't realise it was single when it came. I didn't read the instructions properly. But that was my main colour. There's just about 13 grams of that left. Um, so it's always good to, to use up nearly a whole skein. And I'll put that into my Cozy Memories blanket. And then for my coordinating colours, I used these beauties here from Martin's Lab. And it's a fade that I was gifted, oh, maybe two years ago. And... In hindsight, maybe I could have had more contrast, but actually I'm thrilled with the outcome. And I'll show you the, the beautiful shawl that um, I was able to knit. And here is this shawl. Hope you can get, I'll put it over my brother, my face. Hope you can get an idea. As always, Stephen shawl, Stephen's shawls end up being quite large. And it's just beautiful. Now, ladies, you probably won't see me wearing many knitted items in this podcast because I'm at that age where I'm hot one minute and cold the next. And uh, many of you can empathise with me, I'm sure. But shawls are just fantastic for me because you can put them on and off just when you need to. And I have been an avid shawl knitter this year. And just to show you this again, this beautiful slip stitches. I don't think I'm giving away anything when I say that. And the beautiful contrasts and then the lovely border. And as always, Stephen West's signature is the I-cord bind off. Now that is a mammoth task, but so, so worth it. And I just love Stephen's shawls. So that's the winter light shawl. I'll show you it again. Um, and the other thing I love about Stephen West's shawls, you can't go wrong. He himself says, don't panic. Don't worry about mistakes. If you do a mistake, it's a design feature and you could literally use any colours, whether they match, whether they clash, anything. And I'll just show you the other shawl that I finished this year of Stephen West. And it was the mystery um, shawl he did. Oh, I don't know how long ago now. Um, and it was the Slip Stravaganza shawl. I find the start of it. And when you see this, now I'm warning you, you might need to put your sunglasses on. I just randomly picked some skeins out of my stash and I love bright colours and this one here definitely, definitely used those bright colours and this is the Slip Stravaganza from Stephen West and again an absolute masterpiece in designing. And this shawl, we jokingly, with um, my Zoom friends, we call this the menopause shawl because I have it on during Zoom meetings and I have it off and I have it on again. But I just love this shawl and such a bright colour, especially in these winter months. And um, I put it on, especially when I'm crafting. And that's a slip extravaganza that um, many people have knit. Um, and again, it looks like a really difficult shawl but Stephen explains it so well. His tutorials on YouTube are just fantastic. And I would say if you're on the fence about knitting a Stephen Wet shawl, go ahead. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of his patterns and designs, I just don't feel cool and trendy enough to wear. But um, these ones were a delight. I also finished the Lava Lake shawl, um, but I'll not show you that today. And so that was my three Stephen Wet shawls this year. And I love each and every one of them. So... That's my finished objects. Now, whips <laughs> is always difficult. I don't know. I think I'm in the same boat as a lot of other crafters. I have whip after whip after whip and I love a good cast on. But um, due to homeschooling for a while there, I knit copious amounts of socks. I knit a lot of vanilla socks that I didn't have to concentrate too much and um, <laughs> that I was just able to get up and jump um, and help where, where it's needed. I have one I have a daughter that can pretty much get on with it, but my son needs a lot of help and a lot of supervision. So I was very thankful to have socks on the needle. And I generally have a vanilla sock in my handbag, but obviously I don't use my handbag many times at the moment. 
Um, so I thought we'd just share the whips that are ongoing. Now, I have panting whips, is that allowed? Um, just before Christmas, um, early December, I knit some shop samples for the lovely Sophie from Botanical Yarn. Um, if you want to see those in beautiful um, created pictures, you can look on her Instagram, um, on Botanical Yarn Instagram. But the, one of the socks that I knit was the Advent socks. They were my first all over coloured um, colour work, sorry, uh, Advent socks. You can see they're lovely and I have to say these were a challenge. There were some duplicate stitch as well and I really find these a challenge but beautiful when they were finished and it was my first proper short, re short row heel as well. And this is a free pattern. It's meant to be done as an Advent so you do a little bit every day but obviously for Sophie she wanted them to um, put in her shop. And there were, she had um, kits uh, ready for those um, and she may still have those. The other pair that I knit and I thoroughly enjoyed knitting these was the winter socks, the winter socks by Sandra C, C Designs and these are beautiful. They have a lovely Latvian braid. That was the first time I'd done that too and it's so simple once you get the hang of it. And these came out so stunning. And in Sophie's yarn, it was just, it was like knitting with butter. It was just beautiful. So you can have a look on her Instagram site for those um, socks in beautiful, beautiful pictures. But she's asked me to knit a couple of other pairs and she's given me permission to talk about those on the podcast. And I got a little message from Royal Mail to say that the yarn for them's on its way. And the two pairs of socks that she's asked me to do are the Astrid socks beautiful socks by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. So they'll be going on to the needles once the yarn comes. Uh, Sophie obviously picks her choice of colours. I don't know which colours are coming, uh, but I'll be sure to show you them in the next podcast. And the other pair that she's asked me to um, do are the Candy Mountain socks by Twin Stitches Designs. If you can see those. And that will just show off her... Um, yarn just beautifully. These socks actually have an afterthought heel and I've only done one afterthought heel so I'm really hoping that um, I do a good job of them because they'll be shop samples again for Sophie. So as I say go and have a look at Botanical Yarn um, Instagram site and you'll get a, a, a view of not only um, my socks but Sophie's beautiful yarn. So that's Pending Whips. That's a, that's a new, a new uh, thing I've made up there. And um, I have other whips, a couple of other whips that are ongoing. So I have, well, yes, I have always got a whip for Zoom. Zoom knitting. You want to chat, you want to laugh, you want to talk, as us women do, uh, but you don't want to concentrate. So for Zoom knitting, I have um, on the go, I have um, Julie's Wrap. You can see that without me taking it out of the plastic. Julie's Wrap by Hohi Locatelli and this is just beautiful and so good for Zoom knitting because it's all <laughs> just straight, it's my needle keeper, just straight knitting, 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 garter stitch and then you pick up the sides to knit um, the, the nice fancy bits and that is just perfect because I can talk away, not concentrate and just so this is how far I've got with that and there's still quite a bit to go. Um, this yarn is, I'm sorry for all the M's, <laughs> there'll be a few more. This yarn is from one of my favourite indie dyer and that's Paw Ply Company. Lovely Daniel. I used to live, we, well as a family we used to live up in Peterhead. We moved to Devon um, just in 2019. We worked for the mission up there. And Daniel's up in Aberdeenshire and he has started, started dying maybe a year ago. It's his first anniversary and I have got addicted to his yarn. And this lovely yarn here, this lovely beautiful colour, as I say I love bright colours, he named my name for it and I, I named it Devon Sunset. And I'll show you the Devon Sunset and these that is certainly the colour 
of the beautiful Devon sunsets we get, maybe not this time of the year, but certainly through the summer. And it's all of the yarn is superwash merino nylon. And then for the, that'll be for the main body. And then for the, um, oh, that's showing up beautifully. For the sides, I'll be using this. And it's, that is Roses Are Red. There we go. Roses Are Red. And I just say, I just love Daniel's yarn. Give him a wee check out. And Daniel, I'm sure you'll not mind me saying that your yarn is 100% beautiful in real life. And don't always go by the photographs because it's very very hard as you know to pick yarn from photographs but you won't go wrong if you if you um, buy Daniel's yarn that's my enabling so many po podcasters have enabled me to buy things and that's my enabling and of course it's all housed in a beautiful Jibby Rousseau's bag and you'll find out as the podcast goes on that I love anything with a rainbow on it and that's my lovely Jibby Rousseau's bag um, and she's on Etsy then my other ho, didn't think I would say that in public, um, is this beautiful sock. And I'm hoping you can see, oh, really hope you'll be able to see the, the design on this. Not maybe sure. Maybe there you can. Um, it's very hard to... Anyway, it's got a lovely faux cable right down there. And this is knit in loved hand-dyed yarn. It's um, if any of you haven't got into the um, hand dyed buying, um, I would really recommend this yarn. It's love hand dyed, and this pattern is um, from Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, and it's the Dunbrock socks or Dunbrock socks. I'm not honestly sure, and you can maybe see from this, you see the beautiful cable, mock cable, right down the front, right down the side. Sorry, and the same on the other sock and it's this has got a fold over cuff and it's just beautiful let me see there probably this isn't the best yarn to be displaying this in but in real life it is just gorgeous and I really love it and I could just imagine them up in the highlands of Scotland wearing these uh, socks with their kilts so I've got a hoe and I've got one another one well started it's well started there. Maybe you can see the. I always use nine inch circulars for all of my socks, and um, I've just got so used to it. And I definitely have a preference for uh, wooden needles. I got rid of all my metal needles, and I generally only use wooden. And these are Knit Pro Symphonies, and these little stoppers are loads for very little off Amazon I think I don't know where they come from but I love those of just keeping my yarn on and my wee um, stitch marker with my wee face let's see <laughs> there we go is from Amelia X Joy on Etsy um, I'm addicted to her bags as well and this is all housed in my lovely friend Anne of Tucker Dory on um, Instagram made me this beautiful bag and Anne is also known as Thistle Glen Designs and she has beautiful patterns on Ravelry. I would recommend, highly recommend you go look at Anne and beautiful socks, shawls, hats and um, Anne gives a percentage of her income from those patterns to the Salvation Army and she was telling me the other night that she's been able to give £400 to the Salvation Army over the past year from um, people buying her patterns. She, um, and at this time, when things are so rough in, in our country and people are struggling so badly, the Salvation Army is just doing an amazing job with those who are less fortunate than, than ourselves. So that's my um, pending... <laughs> pending um, whips and some of the whips that I have on the needles at the moment. Now one of the other things that um, I love to do is obviously watch podcasts and one of my favourite podcasts is Kate of Hawthorne Cottage. Now I love her for two reasons, maybe three reasons. One is she's a fantastic knitter and, and I love watching all her um, things that she does. Another one is she's from Northern Ireland and she lives in the area where I grew up. As you can tell from my accent, I'm not English. And um, 
in her vlogs at Christmas, I was right up to the screen to watch as she went down roads that I know so well. But the other thing, reason I love watching her is for her cals. And I am jumping on the cal that she's running for a whole year called the Lucky Dip Cal. And um, if you want to know more and details about the Lucky Dip Cal, you can look at um, Kate's Instagram, you can look at her podcast and she'll explain it better. But I have decided that this year is my stash down 2021. I have accumulated an awful lot of yarn over the last year. Some of it was, you know, making me, che cheering me up. Some of it was beautiful gifts. Some of it was spending birthday money, Christmas money, whatever. Um, I love a good sale. And I just have gone down the, the slippery slope of falling in love with hand dyed yarn. But I um, obviously live in, in England. We're not near any family. Um, all my family still live in Northern Ireland. And my lovely brother, I've got one brother, sent me a hamper for Christmas from Marks and Spencers. Now, if you live in England or UK, you'll know Marks and Spencers well. And the kids were so excited about what was in the box. But you know what? I was excited about the box. And I am going to show you the box now. And this is the beautiful box <laughs> that my hamper came in. And I have decided this is my Lucky Dip Cal box. And I'm going to use this with my Lucky Dip Cal. Now, if I can hold this up without dropping all of these out, um, it'll be a miracle. And this is my 12 lovely, lovely skeins of yarn. And I have them all in these little bags. Now, a story about these little bags, these beautiful little bags. Look, I love a tiny socks, sock bag. I got, I ordered, commissioned some bags, this like this, like these bags here, look aren't they gorgeous, again my rainbows, and um, from a wonderful maker called to, bag, to Bags From Stitches, handmade by Sally Mills, there's her card, and my original plan was to use these as little gift bags, but I've fallen in love with them. <laughs> So I've decided that whatever's in the bag, I'll knit into socks and I will gift those socks in those bags. I hope that's going to work. So I have 12 bags in um, this box and I'm going to rummage through now. You're the first to see this. I'm not looking, I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Right, I've got one. Oh, look at the rainbows. On the, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And what's in the bag? Oh, Look at the lining. Look at the lining of that wee bag. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's from Sally. First yarn is a woolly goodness yarn. Absolutely love this yarn. Big fan. I got last year, I got a, quite a few boxes of her five gram mini skeins. And this yarn, to say it's soft, is an understatement. It's her Christmas yarn, but sure. And it says spark, silver sparkle four ply, merry and bright sock set. There's the, the matching mini. And it's um, 210 in a 50 gram skein. Now, I only buy, tend to buy for socks 50 gram skeins. I can get a really good sock um, out of a 50 gram skein and a, and a mini. I'm a size eight and I can still get a really good sock. And it's a great way to buy hand dyed yarn because it's just that little bit, in my head anyway, cheaper to buy a 50 gram than a than a full hundred gram skein, and then you're not worried about what I'm going to do with the with the leftover. So that's my socks, and I'll have those knit up. So it's I'm sorry, it's a sock train for January probably, but there will be many more things to come. I have a file full of things that I want to do, a file full of things that I want to knit, uh, from garments to hats to socks to shawls. I have them all and of course the next new shiny thing that comes out I want to knit it and my favourite designer is Isabel Kramer and she has just yesterday put up a new sweater um, on Insta that she's, that she's um, designing and I've knit, test knit for her several times and that would be a big temptation to join in that test knit again. So that's my box of socks from my lovely <laughs> hamper, hamper box. And that'll stay in my craft room and each month I'll pick out um, a pair of socks. I can knit a pair of socks pretty quickly, especially if we're grounded in lockdown. 
I'm sorry if I keep looking all over the place. I will get better at, at looking at the camera. I hope it's not making you feel a bit odd. Um, and I will get better at this, I hope. And the last portion of the um, podcast is although I'm stash dining <laughs> in 2020, I do have one acquisition. And I've seen a lot of podcasters looking and shown at this book and I got an Amazon voucher for Christmas and thought I'll just go for it and it's the Colour Work Bible by Jesse Ostermiller and just looking through it I have knit quite a few colour work things this year I knit the jumper I knit those socks um I love the look of it but it's I find it hard to do from the point of view that I'm quite a fast knitter as I've said and I just haven't mastered where to hold my yarn, what way to hold my yarn, um, what hand to hold my yarn and I'm an English knitter Um, I I flick or no I don't flick I, I throw I think and um, I've just found it so I've had, I have to put one strand down lift the other strand so I thought this would really help with some of those beautiful colour work um, sweaters that I have my eye on. And it is a really good book. Half the book is uh, patterns. Oh, I'm not sure I can show you. I mean, look at that. It's not just stunning. And that's a pattern in the book. And the first, but the first half goes covers everything from matching colours, which I am rubbish at. Maybe you'll realise from some of my shawls. Um, but and what goes with what and contrast. Now and then it goes into some of the techniques. Now many of the techniques you could probably get on YouTube or whatever but I just love having a really lovely book in my stash. Covers from just ordinary colour work to swatching to double knitting to brioche to um, what else is in here? Oh um, intarsia something I definitely would like to grip to grips with. So if you're looking for a book or you are um, got that voucher burning a hole in your pocket this was definitely a book that I would recommend. And again, I saw that on, on Kate's um, of Hawthorne Cottage. Um, I saw that on her um, podcast too. Again, with the M's. I'm so sorry with the M's. But, you know, I think that's us for the nitty goodness today. Homeschooling will have to start at some point today. And just as I think heading into this lockdown... So many people are worried and so many people are struggling. I just wanted to share one wee bit of God's word with you today at the end of this podcast. And it's from Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And just reading that passage just lifts my spirits today. And I really pray that if you're struggling mentally, physically, any way, that you would get in touch. Please feel free to leave me a comment or get in touch on Instagram. If you just want somebody to talk to, we're here. And I just pray that whatever way you have to deal with this new lockdown, that you will somehow find comfort and peace in your knitting especially. So until we meet again, until um, I get back on this again in a few weeks time, I just pray that you'll stay safe and keep on knitting. God bless. Bye.